All right, folks, this is uh, this is an international harvester, a uh, little red tractor, the Farmall series. This is the baby of the series. This is called a cub, like a bear cub. And this, this one is uh, from 1949. And this is just gonna be a sort of a quick little tutorial, walk around um, for anybody that might be interested uh, looking at a cub or whatever. Uh, this might help you out a little bit. So uh, it's a four cylinder uh, little gas engine and this one has been converted to 12 volt uh, like your modern day cars and trucks. Originally this would have run off of a six volt system which is very similar um, but a uh, few little differences. Uh, this uses an alternator. Um, this particular tractor uses an alternator now uh, instead of a generator. A six volt system would have had a generator. Um, that's really the biggest difference. There's some minor, minor differences as well. Um, but this tractor, it's so very versatile. These are a popular little tractor for a lot of reasons. You may have heard of a Cub Low Boy. There were different models of Cub made um, yeah, that sit lower to the ground and folks uh, use them to mow with a lot. You can also put a mower on this tractor. You can see it's got cultivators. Um, and this, this line of tractors, the Farmall tractors, were, uh, they kind of made a, a trade name or copyrighted a, a, a term called Cultive Vision. And that vision was meant to be the vision that an operator would have of the crops in front of the tractor. You can see that the operator sits off to one side. Uh, the, if you're looking down the center of the tractor here, the operator's on the, uh, the one side to where they can see the crops that they would be running over and cultivating or uh, even fertilizing. And cultivating is simply just uh, these, uh, these shoes here are dropped on a hydraulic linkage and lever system. Uh, they run down in the ground and rather than using a hoe or a rototiller, um, you just drag those through the ground. And you may see other videos on YouTube about that. Um, but this tractor, uh, to check the oil on it, that's kind of unique. There's, a, there's kind of a breather set up here. Um, they're not all the same. I don't know if all the Cubs have a dipstick. This one has a dipstick. Um, some of them you may find don't have a dipstick. And I know other Farmall models have, um, they've got two little screws in the oil pan. This is the oil pan down here. One would be your low level and one would be your upper level. Uh, this tractor here happens to have that. This is a Super A. This would be the next step up from the Cub. I don't know how well this is going to show up here, but you can see there's these two knobs. These are hand knobs. You unscrew that, and if oil comes out this bottom one, that's your uh, low level, so you've got enough to run. And if oil comes out this top one, that's as much oil as you want to have in it. So rather than hash marks on the dipstick, you've got those two. Uh, but this cub does have that dipstick. Um, it it uh, Again, it's very versatile. You see these uh, holes in the side here? You can mount other attachments to these. Um, over here on this Super A again, you'll see that uh, this is a uh, fertilizer unit. It, it's missing the bin that the actual the fertilizer sits in, you know, the granules themselves. But you can see how that bolts on the side of the tractor. Well, it's the same sort of attachments over here. Um, the hydraulics are very simple on this, uh, on the Cub. They've got one lever for hydraulics. So as you move this lever, when the tractor's running, the hydraulics go up and down. Uh, this is the throttle lever here, and this is the choke on uh, newer cars and stuff like that. You don't you don't have a, a choke, but on these old tractors, and again, I think this one's from 1949. It's a manual choke on the carburetor. So when you pull this, it chokes the carburetor. A plate in the a plate in the carburetor blocks the airflow uh, that enriches uh, the mix and uh, uh, when it's really cold out, you want to use your choke. Uh, if it's really warm or the tractor's been running, you won't you won't ever need that. Then this this is the starter. If I were to pull this any harder, I would uh, actually engage the starter motor to start the engine. Um, but that's only if this button is pulled. So uh, these tractors were um, you just can't jump on it and take off. You kind of got to know what you're doing. Um, but they're they're fairly simple as as tractors go. <laughs> Uh, back here, you'll see there's a PTO shaft, and that's engaged 
with this. So if the tractor were running, you would uh, press the clutch pedal. There's three pedals here. The pedal to the far right is for this wheel. That's the brake on this wheel. The pedal in the center is the brake on this wheel. And there's no brakes in the front. The pedal on the far left is the clutch that disengages the manual transmission. It also disengages or engages the PTO. So if there were a pulley back here, maybe running a, uh, uh, a belly mower, um, you could engage and disengage using this lever right here. So you would push in the clutch, move the lever, and actually on this one, on the Cubs, if it has the plate down here, they should, but not all of them do, over time, these, these plates have been removed on some of them and lost. Uh, you would push, push the clutch in, push down on this lever, move it back, and then release it and it'll come up. If it were running, it would go into gear there. Um, so anyhow, that's how you engage and disengage the clutch, or excuse me, the PTO. Um, it's a four-speed transmission. There are three forward gears. One, two, three, and Reverse has one gear. So this is a four-speed uh, Manual transmission you operate it with the shifter here. Um, this this is in uh, neutral right now So that's why it moves as easily as it does The uh, to do the maintenance and uh, kind of a pre-inspection the first thing you want to check is your oil So again, we would remove this dipstick check to make sure we've got oil on the marks that we should uh, You also should periodically and I'm not sure how often uh, check your final drive fluids and there's gear oil behind this plug if you remove that plug and oil comes out you've got plenty of oil in your final drive on this side you have to do the same thing on this side the plugs kind of hidden on this one on this side this is the sort of stuff that you don't do every day uh, but it is something that you should know where it's at and know, know how to check it um, to check that you have enough transmission fluid or gear oil in your transmission you remove that little square plug down there and a the fluid comes out you've got enough um, if you don't have enough you add fluid in this plug here um, so that's how you check your oil your transmission and your two final drives the uh, other thing you want to keep an eye on well many many things you want to keep an eye on but underneath here one more uh, critical part that you should check you know every day see that yellowish uh, thing hanging down there this is your gas tank here this whole big assembly from you see this line this is the the gas tank um, the gas caps on some of these are really tall I couldn't tell you why uh, you'll see that tractor over there just has a short little cap uh, but some of these have the taller cap and I'm not sure why but they're interchangeable so uh, anyhow down here that's called a sediment bowl and there's a shutoff valve on top of that. You can see, uh, kind of hard to see with the wires and stuff, but there is a rod there, my finger's on, and that rod is a valve. And you can twist that in to shut the fuel off, or you twist it all the way open to open the fuel. The sediment bowl allows any dirt, rust, uh, any contaminants in the tank to fall down and settle in that glass bowl. And periodically, you remove the nut on the bottom down here, it's kind of hard to get to again. This thumb wheel, you can unscrew that by hand and remove that glass bowl. You dump out all the dirt and stuff, you put the bowl back up there and you screw it back on. And that's what uh, helps keep your gas uh, clean going into the carburetor. So that's kind of the uh, the rough checks you want to do on it before you jump on it. Of course, there's, there's grease fittings all over these things. Um, anywhere that Two metal parts come together. You can see this one's been broken off. That needs to be replaced. Anywhere where two uh, pieces of metal rub together, there should be a grease fitting. Um, on the radiator, radiator is just very simple. This is a, a cap just like your uh, just like your car has. And you want to check the fluid. You can kind of see that green down there. That's the antifreeze, so it's got plenty of fluid. If you put too much in it, <coughs> it will overflow. As the engine's running, it warms up. It'll overflow out a tube. Let's see, just so you're not alarmed. If you do overfill it, it's no problem. There's a tube right here. I don't know how well this is gonna show up, but there's a tube that comes down and empties down here. Um, if you ever see antifreeze coming out that tube, you simply overfilled it a little bit. When the engine warms up, everything gets expanding and moving, the, the, the fluid does. It'll find its own level. So uh, don't be alarmed if you 
get a little leakage there. Now over here you'll see what I talked about a, a minute ago with this starter rod. It's just got a lot of play in this system. That shouldn't have that much play, but this tractor does. Um, when I pull that rod, it moves this linkage and it forces this button down. Now if I were to push that button, it causes the starter to turn and uh, if the on and off switch is in the run position, when you pull this rod, that'll start the engine. We'll do that here in just a second. Um, so this is your on and off button. This is your light switch. And depending on the model, they have different, uh, some have a three position, some have a four position. Uh, this one I think is a four position, so it's off. And then I couldn't tell you, low, high, and, and rear lights, I think is how that works. But I'm missing the decal here. And this one's been wired up a little differently when, when, uh, when the 12 volt conversion was done, uh, this switch got wired up a little different so that, uh, it, it has uh, front and head and rear lights, uh, but the rear light has not been mounted. So the wire back there is energized when that switch is on. In any case, um, to operate it, you, uh, it, depending on the attachments you have, uh, if you got the cultivators on it, you just step up on the cultivators on this rod here and just step right onto the platform of the tractor. The seat is actually fairly comfortable. They've got a little spring suspension seat, so uh, uh, they actually are fairly comfortable to ride on. Um, now you can see that it's snowing to beat the band. We're getting a snowstorm in March here in Indiana. Um, into March, actually. We're almost into April, so... Uh, we're going to drive this anyhow. I want to take it over there to that other barn and see that door open. Um, and to do that, this will just be a little quick drive here. Um, I'm going to, I'm first of all, I'm going to check to make sure I'm in neutral. And I'm going to reach down and I'm going to pull the on and off switch here. So pull that out. And then I'm going to push my foot on the clutch just to be safe. Make sure it, you know, make sure it isn't actually in gear. Push in on the clutch and pull this starter rod. This is my throttle. So I'm going to throttle it up a bit. And I'm in neutral. And I'm going to go all the way over and down will be first gear. So now I'm in first gear. And I release the pedal very slowly. You'll see that we start to move. So we're going to go out here into the snow and again I'm working the pedal and I can work the brakes as I need them Make sure I don't run into anything so if I wanted to uh, if I wanted to use my power takeoff now I would push in the clutch hold my brakes I can push down on this rod pull it back and release it You'll see that power takeoff shaft in when I release. I'm going to release the clutch now. you see the PTO shaft. So now if I had a uh, mower attachment on, my mower would be turning. Since I don't have any attachments on that PTO, I really don't notice that it's even turning. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage that because I don't want it on. I don't need it on, so... Not it, not turning anymore. We're gonna go into this barn here, and I'm gonna back in. Now I've pushed in the clutch. I'm holding the brakes. Straight up is reverse. Back in over here. Hopefully, I don't run into anything. Got a couple of tractors in here already. I don't want to run into any of them. I'm watching the door. It's a little tractor. It has, uh, they don't have power steering, but they're so small that you can see I'm maneuvering in a tight space with one hand. They're actually pretty easy to drive. They're very quiet too. You can see I'm close there, but I think I'm going to clear. So. I'm going to leave it parked right here, so I want to throttle it down. I've got my clutch pushed in. I'm holding the brakes with both feet. You can, there's a, a little uh, flapper there on top of that brake pedal. 
You could flip that over to this one and engages both brakes in with either pedal. Uh, but it's just as easy to put your foot right on the two of them. So we'll put it back into neutral. Make sure it's in neutral and I'm going to slowly release the clutch and make sure it doesn't move. Okay, doesn't move. Uh, you know, one thing we didn't talk about was this electric meter. Now this is a volt meter. Some tractors have an amp meter. Uh, but I changed this over to a volt meter when I did the uh, 12 volt conversion. And you'll see that that's registering almost 14 volts, somewhere in the neighborhood of 13. That means that the electrical system is charging very well. So, uh, anyhow, that's that's the voltmeter there. Um, but I've got it throttled down, and to kill the tractor, all I'm going to do is push in that on-off switch, that little push-pull switch, and that's it. Now, if you wanted to drive this tractor again, and you came out to it one day, and you forgot to pull that switch out, it's a very easy thing to do. It's very easy to forget about that push-pull switch because the starter will turn without that switch being on. Okay, so I've got my switch off. And if I wanted to start this up, it'll crank. But it just won't start. So make sure you've... Uh, make sure you're using that switch. You know, make sure it's uh, in the on position when you want it to run. It's a pretty common mistake people can make with these things. Anyhow... Uh, that's that's kind of a walk around and driving uh, a farm all cub. If you got any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please like the video, click the button. Uh, if you if you think you uh, might want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button. And I'm all the time working on other things. There's a John Deere H there uh, back here. There's a another farm all Super A similar to the one in the other barn and. Uh, you can see I've got the excavator and the uh, crawler loader out there. I'm making videos on the uh, crawler loader right now. I'm doing some work on it. So um, if you like this, uh, subscribe, hit the like button. If you got any questions at all, shoot them down there in the comments and I'll uh, answer them as best I can. Thanks for watching.